Hello my soccer universe. Well, <laughs> I have to get used to making review videos again. It's only two today and I hope I don't have to redo this one. Uh, we'll talk of course everything that happened in uh, La Liga and Liga Portugal who were the second and first leagues respectively to come out of a winter break. The Premier League didn't have a winter break. So uh, quite some exciting stuff happening overall. Um, it was for me between Porto and Espanyol and then I said I go with the stats Espanyol had the biggest win, very close ahead of Celta Vigo, whereas Porto had had a huge win overall, uh, but statistically it didn't quite work out uh, that well for them. So yeah, um, I think in Portugal we are almost headed now to a two-way title race, uh, whereas in Spain the big question for me is now, did Real Madrid just throw a lifeline to all the other opponents in a way? We gotta see about that. I would say we'll start in Portugal where um, actually quite an entertaining match between Sporting and Portimonense. So Sporting actually putting some pressure onto Porto for winning again and that's exactly what they did against Benfica. In the first half uh, where they actually had a uh, goal this is a lot of, uh, for offside, they quickly scored through Vieira and Pepe. Uh, I think the it was what, what was the Vieira goal, the first one. That was really well played. It was a quick throw in where the you know the ball boy really uh, helped also a lot with and uh, played it to Vieira who just uh, took a dummy and then a shot through the legs of the goal goalkeeper. Then Pepe adds on to make it two 0 But right after the half. Uh, Benfica come back and score uh, in the 46 through y y Yaremchuk, a really uh, well played uh, attack. Um, and then uh, the game actually went uh, out of Benfica's favor because Almeida already on the yellow really um yeah i thought it was a stupid but he tackled it was a yellow card and it's a yellow red and Befica then had to play with 10 men for the rest of the second half they had actually a big chance to um equalize but in the end it's taremi uh with another nutmeg <laughs> of the goalkeeper uh to had set um porto on a big win and porto i think are really rolling they had now many many wins um coming uh we also had a big win of braga against aruka and as, as you know if you saw the um, performance review braga is kind of this team that's between the top three then there's braga and then there's the rest so benfica is falling out of that one uh as well uh, a couple of makeup games uh nothing really interesting my new favorite new favorite i shouldn't say so it's like me, but i for some for some reason i like tondela 2-1 winner more revenge pulls them out of the zone um we don't have any uh, really big matchups come, coming up although Sturil against Porto might be an interesting one because uh, their uh, uh, Sturil is a pretty good promoted team and just uh when we look at standings in, in terms of chances yes Benfica has only seven percent chance so it's between Porto and Sporting and Porto uh, although they have identical records they have more goal scored they have the more um, uh, experienced squad so one would think that it will be Porto uh, going forward um, as I said the rest it's usually that half the league is in a relegation battle uh, Tondela as I said move, moved up uh, with Belenenge really really look low looking trouble and if you look up the story of Belenenge uh, in the um, um, on Wikipedia, you kind of see uh, that this was bound to happen. Moving over to Spain, where we actually had a weird round where one game, Espanyol's uh, win at Valencia was played before uh, New Year's, the rest was then played on the 2nd of Jan Jan January. But uh, what a win for Espanyol it was because uh, they came down from 1 0 uh, early in the second half, uh, get an equalizer. In the uh, 83rd, uh, through Raul de Tomas, on a penalty where Hugo Duro then got a yellow red before that. So uh, the penalty is scored, and that late uh, search, then uh, Puado gives them a win in the 88th minute. Espanol, hence, this was uh, the biggest win that we had um, so far. And then uh, the new year starts out with a bag, bang, not a bag, <laughs> bang, uh, with Real Madrid. Uh, I mean, I hear conflicting reports. I actually didn't see it. I saw some highlights where Real Madrid did create some ch chances. I hear that, uh, you know, Angel said they were still on vacation. Others say that Real Madrid didn't play that badly, but were a little bit unlucky with converting. Others say that Real Madrid really played bad. 
Fact is, in the ninth minute, uh, Unai, Unal uh, gives Getafe a lead and the Real Madrid never can come back. And that, in a way, opens slightly, slightly, slightly the door for all the other opponents that uh, have a realistic chance for a title. First up would be Atletico Madrid, although I think Atleti is already more or less out of the title race. Uh, but they get a, I don't want to say impressive win, because Arayo... As good as they are on the table, they all uh, wins at home, away from home. And although it's just Madrid, they weren't all that good. And I love the jersey manager, but Atletico Madrid really dominated the game from front to back. And it's Angel Correa who scores both goals and uh, give a comfortable victory to Atleti. Um, a pretty impressive result was Celta Vigo's win. Thanks, they're up there. New Vigo shirt over uh, Betis with Iago Aspa scoring both goals. Uh, the first one threw a penalty. The second one, uh, just watch it how uh, I think he gets the ball off, off of the defender after the ball doesn't find him, then curves around, gets past the defender one last time and then past the goalie and in wonderful run. Uh, pretty big win for Celta and Betis kind of with a stuttering start. And we knew that Betis is probably a little bit too high in the table at the moment. So maybe that's the beginning of, you know, a little bit more rocky. Not that I wish it for them. I, I would love if the current top four would actually end up in the top four at the end of the season. Because uh, it would give us a different flavor. But, you know, we got to see what um, Betis are made of. Uh, Barcelona, workmanlike win. I think in the first half, Barca was uh, largely the better team, I would say. Um, with Luc de Jong actually putting in a pretty, pretty good shift. I mean, uh, one bias, well, a, a sidekick, kind of um, scissor kick, hits the crossbar and then he scores uh, the goal. And that's a Luc de Jong that is actually about to return back. Barcelona making big moves, you know, uh, Ferran Torres is already there, cannot play. Uh, certain players, uh, they don't want, like Demir uh, from Austria. Not that it, that it is all Austrian, but, you know, they just don't want to play him because otherwise the permanent, uh, the contract becomes permanent and stuff like that. Uh, it's a weird situation that they went there with a makeshift squad, but they ground out the win. Also, thanks to the staying with a mega save at the end of the game. So... Um, Maybe but there's something coming with Barra Barcelona, maybe not. We just got to see uh, uh, about that. I mean, there were big announcements made. We are back. We are a big player again. I don't believe any of that yet. I think this is more or less Barcelona talking themselves up. Let's see if they can actually re re just a fair on Torres and get rid of Usman Dembele and Coutinho, which will be a, a mega task for them. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't see it, but Villarreal really now starts becoming impressive. 5-0 win over Levante. Yes, Levante are last. But ever since Gerard Moreno is back, Levante are really trending upward. Uh, Levante, Villarreal are trending upward. Uh, very impressive stuff. I saw a bit of Osasuna against Bilbao with a great opening uh, half hour uh, where Garcia gave Osasuna the lead, but then Sanse uh, twice scores in the uh, first, first, first seven. They had, he, he finishes his hat trick in the 68th, and Sevilla get a win also. And that's the other team that probably could challenge most for the title. I don't quite buy it. Uh, it was a bit of hard work and it's typically Sevilla. Sevilla never looks convincing to me. Uh, they are a good team, they are a solid team, but they are not exciting. And there's always, uh, it, it has always a little, a little bit of sleeper quality with Sevilla, um, where I think they could do much better, but on the other side, they do get results. So um, take it for Wald, while it is Ocampo scores the goal, he had another one disallowed for uh, offside. Overall deserved, although uh, Cadiz gave them a scare uh, very late on. So let's see where it will go. We see now in the uh, table that it is now five points with a game in hand. So that's two points. But I honestly, I don't see Sevilla uh, pipping Real Madrid. They have the head to head and when it goes against the big opponents, especially the head-to-heads, Sevilla have been usually faltering. They really need to convince me. That's what I want to say in that. Uh, the upcoming round is actually, I think there's a lot of Copa del Rey now. I mean, it's this weekend is the upcoming round. Villarreal against Atletico Madrid seems to be the game to watch. Uh, 
I mean, nominally, it's probably Real Madrid against Valencia. Uh, Real Sociedad against Celta could be a fun duel, but I don't trust these teams at the moment. Um, and then another sleep is early on Sunday, I think, between Rayo and Real Betis. So those are the games that I'm kind of have a little bit my eye on. So yeah. That's it from me for La Liga for the beginning of the year. Please let, let me know what you thought about the matches that were happening. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.